In this video, we're going to switch gears a little bit from metathesis and redox reactions into a sort of a separate part of the chapter. This part of the chapter focuses on reactions and solution. Uh, we're going to kind of pivot here, and now we're going to start working with concentration, basically. Units of concentration and problems that involve concentration in reactions. So just to get some terminology in, um, most of this should be review from high school, but I'm just going to refresh your memory of a few different terms. So we have a solution, and the thing to remember with solution is that it's a homogeneous mixture, mixture of a solvent and a solute. So a solvent is a substance that is in the larger quantity in the solution. So the solvent represents the bulk of the solution. And the solute is something that is in smaller quantity that's dissolved into the solution. So that, that kind of refreshes your, your memory of those, term, those terms from high school. And then if we have an aqueous solution, that means that the water, that the water is the solvent. Now the big thing that we're going to be talking about is concentration. And this essentially refers to the quantity of solute relative to the solution or to the solvent. And there are really two main types. So we have uh, molarity. And this has units of moles of solute per liter, or it gets what we call big M. And then we have molality, which is in units of moles of solute per kilogram of solvent. And this gets little m. And I should mention for molarity, this is uh, moles per liter of solution of the entire solution, whereas molality is moles per kilogram of solvent. So that defines the two main uh, types of concentration. Now the way that we're going to use mol molarity or molality, and primarily we're going to be doing this with molarity, but uh, the way that we're going to use concentration is as a, a new unit conversion. And what concentration allows us to do is it allows us to go between the volume of the solution and the number of moles in the case of molarity, or it allows us to go between the kilograms of solvent and the number of moles in the case of molality. So this becomes a new unit conversion. And the way to think about this is we have our unit conversions. We have a couple of different ways of getting to the mole. So one way of getting to the mole is by mass, and this we use the molecular weight grams per mole. Another way of getting to the mole is through the number of particles and we use Avogadro's number. Now we're gonna add a new spoke and we can go from volume to the number of moles using molarity as an example. So volume of solution and we can go to molarity using this. So, and once we're in the number of moles, we can then go to mass, the number of particles, or if we have a balanced reaction, we can use the, molecule, the coefficients, and then we can go from moles of A to moles of B. And then once we're in moles of B, we can get to the mass, the number of particles, or to a volume of the solution, depending on what we want to get. Um, and we can come out any way we want. So this this molarity gives us a whole new dimension to this pre, the previous picture, and now we can reintroduce our concepts of stoichiometry into the concepts of molarity. So let's take a look at some very basic molarity problems. Lecture problem two allows us to work with molarity a little bit and get some practice. Now these are pretty basic, and this should just be a review of high school. So we're going to kind of review this, but in essence, um, this, this level should be pretty easy. What we're going to go on to do is we're going to go on to do things like dilution problems and then reaction stoichiometry involving molarity, and that's more at the level of the, like a college course. So working with molarity, so it says 0 0.0678 grams of NaCl is placed in 250 milliliter volumetric flask. The salt is dissolved in water and the flask is filled to the mark. Calculate the molarity. So the first thing we have to do in this, in this question is we have to tell you what a volumetric flask is. There's a couple of pieces of glassware we're going to introduce, and volumetric flasks is one of them. So a volumetric flask looks like this. It's a, 
a flask with a round bottom that has a long neck and there's a line. And when you fill it up such that the bottom of the meniscus is at the line, then you're going to get whatever the volume is of the flask. So let's just say that this, this flask is equal to a 500 mil flask. Then when the bottom, of the, mini, the bottom of the meniscus is at that line, you know that you have exactly 500 mils of solution in that, in that flask. So the, the reason why we use volumetric flasks is because we can fill it to the mark and then the entire volume of both the solute and the solvent is equivalent to a single value which we can plug into the bottom. So when it says a 25 mil volumetric flask, the volume of the solution in that volumetric flask is gonna be exactly 25.0 mLs. So it says we have 0 0.0678 grams of NaCl is placed into a 25 milliliter volumetric flask. The flask is filled to the mark. Calculate the molarity. So if we wanna get the molarity, this is gonna equal moles per liter. So in this case, we have the volume, and that is going to be 25 mils. So if I convert that to the volume in liters, that's 0 0.0250 liters. Now, the way that you would do that is you would take 25 mils and you would convert that using a unit conversion um, of 1,000 mils for every liter to get to 0 0.0250 liters. And to get the number of moles, we have to take our mass and convert our mass of NaCl into a mass for, um, into a number of moles. So the way that we can convert NaCl into a number of moles is we divide by the molecular weight. So we have 0 0.0678 grams. The molecular weight of NaCl, if you calculate it out, is 58.44 grams for every one mole. So this is gonna equal 0 0.001160 moles of NaCl. So if we plug that into our molarity equation, 0 0.00160 moles, we can calculate our molarity, which is equal to 0 0.00464 molar. And that's going to be our final answer with correct sig figs. Let's take a look at the second one. So it says, how many grams of K2Cr2O7 would you need to weigh out to prepare 250 mils of a 0.1 molar solution? So this is one where we can actually use the concentration as a unit conversion. So when this thing says that it has a 0.1 molar solution, this means, so remember, 0 0.100 uh, big M has the same thing as units of 0 0.100 moles per liter. So we can say that really what we have is for uh, zero, every 0 0.100 moles, that's going to equal one liter, and we can now use that as a unit conversion. So let's set this up as a unit conversion. So how much, how many grams of K2Cr2O7 would you need to weigh out to prepare 250 mils of a 0.1 molar solution? So in this case, what we're doing is, is we're starting with a volume. We have the concentration, which can get us to moles. And then we can go to mass using the grams per mole. So we have to make three hops. We have to go from volume to moles, and then from, uh, I'm sorry, we have to make two hops. We have to go from volume to moles using the concentration, and then from moles to mass using the molecular weight. So let's start doing that. So they give us 250.0 mLs. We need to get this into liters because our concentration is in moles per liter. So our first step is gonna to be to divide by 1,000 mLs for every one liter. And now we can invoke our, um, un our concentration as a unit conversion. For every one liter, there is 0 0.100 moles of the K2Cr2O7. And then once we have moles, we can use our molecular weight, which is for every one mole, we have 294.2 grams. And so when we do this math and we multiply, we multiply 250 by 0 0.1 times 294.2, and then we divide by 1,000 mils, we get 7.355 grams. And that's our answer. So you can see this is our first time that we use the concentration as a unit conversion. Uh, now this is a good one. So this one says how many milliliters of a 0.163 molar solution of NaCl would be required to give 0.958 grams of NaCl? Okay, so in this case, it's we're starting with a mass and it wants to know what volume we would need in order to weigh that out. So we have our concentration, we have our molecular weight, so we're going to go from mass to moles and then from moles to volume in our unit conversion. 
So just to refresh your memory, again, this 0.163 is the same thing as 0 0.163 moles of NaCl per every one liter. That's what the that's what the unit of concentration molarity means. That says that you have for if you have a 0.163 molar solution, you have 0 0.163 moles of NaCl per every one liter. So let's get this started. So we have 0 0.0958 grams. The molecular weight is 58.43 grams for every one mole. I put grams on the bottom just to cancel the grams of NaCl. And then we know that for every 0 0.163 moles of NaCl, we have one liter of solution. And this problem asks us for the volume in milliliters. So for every one liter, we have 1,000 mLs. That's how we can come out at the end with milliliters. So we're going to get 10.05 milliliters. When you do sig figs, this is going to be 10.1 mLs as our final answer. So this is a bit of a review from high school, but it just shows you how you can use molarity as both an equation to solve it or as a unit conversion.